YouTube. I just woke up, got home at like one or two, and it's seven. And I'm going to New York Comic Con. <laughs> I'm going there. Um. I'm just so tired. And I already opened at 7. I wanted to be there by 7. But my body's just so tired. I've been working so much. So. Yeah. I'll tell you guys. I'll show you guys me getting ready. And then, let's go to Comic Con for the first time ever. Norman Reedus is going to be there. Meryl is going to be there from The Walking Dead. Oh, I'm so tired. So you have to go down the ramp apparently. I'm gonna text someone and then I'll get back to you. Look at the dog. The dog has like a handkerchief. But yeah, I'll get back to you. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh, now it's getting busy. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> This way. <laughs> Very cool. Wow. And then if you see that, that's AMC.
Outside the walking bed. Okay, so I heard someone say that he's going to the walking dead thing, so I'm gonna just follow him. Oh, that's the poster. Let's see. I think I went to the wrong floor. But it's a very cool floor that smells like popcorn. Walker Stalker Con, you were able to get tattoos. Not here, I think. <laughs> Very cool. Look, one egg. <laughs> 1A, 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 1A. So right now, I'm looking for 1A so I can do an autograph and a picture photo up with Merle from The Walking Dead. Let's see. <laughs> I'm sorry to send you the first one. I guess we'll come. Um, 
I'm gonna go wait for The Walking Dead to start. I'm gonna go early so I get a good seat. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm not gonna lie. This is whack, but it's nice. All in one. <laughs> it's not what I was expecting, but then again, I don't know what I was expecting. You pay the actors when you get to the table when you go take pictures, but the lines are super long, so it doesn't even make sense to wait that long. And they tell you to come back in like 20 minutes, and I'm not doing all that just to take a picture with someone. I'll take a picture with him when I'm famous. <laughs> but, um, sorry. Right now, I'm going all the way up, all the way up, yeah, Ooh, excuse me, I'll let you guys know what happens when I get there. Yeah, so I vlog. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't tell anyone. Oh, so you're No. <laughs> no, I just don't tell anyone I like work. So, yeah. So far, you have all been the world. Thank you. Thank you for letting us in.
the rest of season, uh, the next season. Um, but tonight, there's a very special thing. You guys are gonna watch the finale episode. The first people to see it, I think, ever. So I hope you guys like it. Um, the show uh, uh, under David Sable has just been uh, fantastic, and Greg and Scott and everybody, and it's um, it's been a real joy. So I, I know you guys are gonna like it, so. I love you too! Yeah, I love all of you. Thank you for coming. I'm Woo! Right, the season finale. Carol Dixon, right now. Content also in the Walking Dead universe. Scott Gimple about to walk right out there. Woo! The Walking Dead Daryl Dixon showrunner David Sable coming out. Right Executive producer Fred Nicotero, everybody. Woo! Series lead and executive producer, Storm and Norman Reedus. <laughs> All right, uh, we, let's just let's just get right to it. We we need to talk about Norman. We need to talk about seeing Melissa McBride take down that fight. <laughs> that, that final scene there. And look, I'm just going to ask you the question that everybody in this entire room wants to ask you, will you marry me? Wait, what? No. It's <laughs> not. Maybe. Yeah, so Sorry about that. Uh, no, the other question everyone wants to ask you in this room, 
What does that mean? What does that scene all mean in terms of... But, back to, back to the news. Um, my good friend, the talented, beautiful Melissa McBride, will be a series regular. So, uh, breaking news! <laughs> Melissa McBride, series regular in season two of Daryl Dixon. Um, it's amazing. Um, I want to get to the uh, the other big thing at the end there, Norman. You know, about seeing Daryl at the end. He's, what's going through his mind there? He's got the boat on one side, he's got Laurent on the other. It seems like, I mean, that's a hell of a choice to make, and it seems like the whole season has been leading up to that choice in terms of the whole sort of concept and definition of what is home. So what can you say about him as he's standing on that beach? I, I think he's, he's, you know, home is where the heart is, and he's starting to open his heart up to these people a bit and, and starting to get to know them. But it's very walking dead to, like, just get almost there. <laughs> you know, and have it pulled away from you. Um, I don't think he was expected. I, I tried to do a little bit of a smile on my face as I sort of fought my way to the boat, and it's gonna stop in real life. Um, but it, you know, it's it's uh, he wants to get home to his people, and he's you know he's 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 sort of finding a family there uh, where he didn't expect it. You know? And that's that's kind of what we talked about in the beginning as being sort of the central premise of the of the show was what happens if in trying to get back home to the people that you love, you find yourself belonging also somewhere else. You find that you start to form another kind of home somewhere else, and what's that dilemma like? And that's where, that's where you are on the beach at the end. And then Lohstein kind of says it in that scene in Two of You. You know, that's, that, that was always sort of the thing that we talked about from the beginning as being the, the central emotional challenge. It's like, I just want to get home. I don't want to form connections. I don't want to belong here. I belong somewhere else. I've got to get back there. And in the context of trying to do that, the character finds himself, you know, almost against his own will, forming bonds, forming connections that, that, that make it tough. It's funny because, you know, you have Daryl on one side, Laurent on the other side, and you two in the middle. Yeah. Which, yeah. Was, yeah, which was the perfect segue. <laughs> That's like such a dad joke. I <laughs> very much right. Well, it's funny you brought up the music because, like, I was using four cameras one at the same time. It was, like, insane. But in France, like you'll do one take, and then they'll stop and roll a cigarette and talk about it. <laughs> and I'm like, what are we waiting on? And then, and then I found out, you know, I think through David, I think through you, what they were saying, and they were saying, well, what story are we telling with this camera move? And I was like, what? Just keep talking. It, take your time. <laughs> and, and, and you can see the shots are so beautiful, and the crew are so excited to be working on the show. It's it's uh, it's really refreshing. It's it's. It's great. And they were huge fans of the show, too. You know, I mean, the show has a big following, obviously, here, but overseas, you know, the fans don't have the access to The Walking Dead that you guys do um, in terms of the panels and things. So when we went over there, people were so excited to, to be on set. You know, the first time we brought zombies on set, everybody stopped what they were doing and applauded. And they were like, <laughs> touching the zombies, like, Is that, how do you do that? It was really nice because in Georgia, after 12 years, we're like, all right, bring up the zombies. Yeah, whatever, great, okay, sure. It was really nice. To there are you Cheetos or Yeah, whatever. it was really nice to, to have everybody just enthusiastic from the production designer and the DP and, and everyone. They were so delighted to be a part of the show that they it shows. Every ounce of enthusiasm shows on the screen. Oh, you know, they were so obsessed with, with zombies at times that... that at, and they were great, obviously. What Greg did on this show is amazing. It's you know another step beyond what he's, all the stuff he's done before. But there were times where I, I would say, especially to effects guys and, and some of the crew, I'm like, that's great. I know you're into the zombies, but we're shooting a, a, an intimate scene over here. So we still need to like keep the cameras going and let's film over here. Don't get too distracted by the zombies. What's, what's funny is to watch like the neighborhood sort of come out of their apartments. And we've completely just fucking destroyed this block. <laughs> What the hell is going on here? Like, that's fun. But there was a lady who came out of her apartment in Paris and came down and there were about 10 zombie walker extras standing there smoking cigarettes and they, they sort of parted for her and she, she went online and said, the zombies are very polite. They're very polite. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, Norman, you told me something a while back. You said, well, it's kind of cool there's like this parallel going on because 
Daryl doesn't know what's going on when he gets over there. And you're like, I kind of don't know what's going on either. I don't know what they're saying in French and this and that. So what was it like, just the language barrier in terms of filming over there? I mean, it's, it's part of the story. It's, you know, Daryl's trying to figure out, is this going to be a fight? Like, is this going to be cool? Like, trying to figure out body language. Uh, I found myself doing that as well. But, uh, it, it, you know, there's, there's certain things you can say without language and there's certain, you know, you can tell that this, this lady cares for this kid. You can tell the kid is sincere. You know, it, the language barrier, it, it doesn't really stop us in any way, but there's an eloquence to uh, the French language in, in, in an apocalyptic scene, which is and sometimes hysterical and sometimes super sad. So, I don't know, it's been great. I, I have no complaints. That was part of what was cool, too, about doing it in France, was you're able to juxtapose a certain kind of culture, a certain kind of history, including the language, against the apocalypse. That will not be possible. That will not happen. I really thought it was a pipe dream, although I really... So I actually, the most moved I ever was on any shoot was when Norman and I and Dan Percival were shooting that scene where he walks across the sand when he's leaving Mont Saint Michel, because I thought, we're never going to actually do that. For months, I thought that. So there was a lot of work. I think that's what you're getting at, Dalton. And there was a lot of work to get a lot of these locations. Very hard. And in France, it's a little bit different than here. In Mont Saint Michel specifically, I had to do a very early trip. Just our location manager and me, we went to Mont Saint Michel, and I had to schmooze the sort of mayor of Mont Saint Michel and schmooze the head of security in Mont Saint Michel. You slept with them both. And <laughs> what? Uh, what did you say? A lot of echo on there. Yeah, a lot. Of echo. Shoot. So they get to the zombie scenes and the directors would set it up and be like, okay, well, we're going to leave and go shoot this. So you shoot all the zombie stuff because you know how to do all of it. So a lot of the directors, Dan and um, Tim, uh, you know, they really trusted me to sort of just... You know, it, it, there was, you know, the, the very first episode, I, I meet uh, Cadron, who's played by Romain, who's, I, I love that guy. Like, I just love him as a person. He's so fun to work with. Huge fan of the show already. But, you know, that opening scene, it was, uh, or that opening episode, you know, he, he, he finds me and we get this, this big epic fight, like this fist fight, and, it, it, and right off the bat, it, I won the fight. And David and I spoke about it, and I was like, you know what, like, let me lose the fight. Let him just beat the shit out of me. And uh, <laughs> Romain's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah, just beat the shit out of me, you know? You know, we'll cut out this punch, cut out that punch, and just throw me around. But it 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 makes him a scarier person coming after me if I can't beat him, you know? So but what I also loved about that is that it makes Daryl more human, and I yeah. love that Norman was really in well, It was between uh, me and Louis, uh, who plays Laurent. Uh, we, did that, we did that scene maybe four times and then I just I had to I had to call it. I was like I felt horrible. Um, in episode five. Oh yeah, you did see it. You in episode five. That. I mean no I don't want to flip a chair over. Uh, but it's it's fun. I have to I have to you know I have uh, you know I'm a boss now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it's kinda cool. Let's uh let's get to a few on
vlog as you can see i went to comic con honestly i really i can't say i enjoyed it it wasn't what i was expecting but then again i don't know what i was expecting i knew i would be limited to what i would be interested in when i attended but i didn't think like i would be limited that much i didn't think that i wasn't gonna be into like basically anything when I attended however it was cool it was a good experience would I do it again no <laughs> if I were to do it again it would be strictly for the walking dead excuse me um to meet the cast and to go to the panel I went to the walking dead panel let me tell you guys let me tell you guys, in one of the clips I showed you the line that I had to wait on to go into the Walking Dead panel. And I specifically went there to meet Norman Reedus, to see Norman Reedus, take a picture with him. And in the clips before this, I did get like a picture, like a video. Um, It wasn't what I was expecting. He almost took my phone, but then I was like losing patience because people were like pushing really tight up against me. And I felt uncomfortable so i just left but i got what i wanted and i went to the panel i saw the unreleased episode um season finale for daryl dixon i saw the give me one moment so i got to see the unreleased episode i got to see a preview for the next season um the trailer and then i also got to see the trailer for rick and michonne the ones who survive <laughs> it was amazing let me tell you it was so good so good um yeah the panel was so cool someone but someone took out their phone and started taking pictures of stuff that we were told not to take pictures of like the trailers because we saw trailers to different shows i don't watch those shows it was like vampire shows and like different other shows and i just thought like how inconsiderate and rude you're gonna like ruin it for everyone else because you can't control yourself but the person made him delete it which i don't really there's a recently deleted file so and then if he took the picture most likely one on his um apple watch and all this other stuff so i highly doubt that he like for real got rid of it for good but um whatever none of my business i'm excited for next year's panel next year's trailer and all that i will definitely be attending specifically for that for like one day to meet them and all that and pictures and the panel other than that i wouldn't recommend it if you're not into anime if you're not into like comics or certain shows because there's nothing really there for you it's overcrowded overpriced i paid for a slice of pizza 
and a drink i paid like literally 19 dollars and for a hot dog it was eight dollars so you can imagine how much the pizza was i was confused how does a pizza a slice of pizza and a, and a drink come out to 19 dollars how that was sway but yeah it was cool it was cool i am at work i am i'm at work I've been busy. I haven't been able to film this segment to like close out the vlog. I'm going to be going somewhere else. I'm going to be vlogging again. Um, It's going to be an interesting month. I have a few more vlogs coming out for you guys. And it's going to be cool. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Mwah. <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in thank you guys for being loyal and supporting me um whether you like me or not you watch me and i appreciate that <laughs> um definitely subscribe and keep an eye out on my community tab on my youtube channel because i talk there about what i'm gonna do next or what you guys would like to see i'm definitely gonna have to have a self-care day because <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I've been eating a lot of lollipops tonight, a lot of candy, a lot of chips. Ugh. Look, that's lollipops. I'm gonna go home at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, get some rest, eat something. And I may vlog, I don't know. But I gotta edit this, put this out, and then I gotta vlog again. Because I got something exciting where I'm gonna go. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm like digging these 40 minute vlogs, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I could ever put out a vlog again that's gonna be like 10, 20 minutes long. I think I'm gonna have to do like 40 minute vlogs. Because I'm kind of digging these. These are really cool. Um, very action packed. <laughs> And I get a lot done in the vlogs, like, you guys see a lot, and it's just better. Excuse me. <sighs> Definitely, they'll talk to you guys later. Like I said, like, comment, and subscribe. What are you doing? <laughs> oh. I, have... I hope the person that comes to relieve me comes on time because that's one thing i could say like a lot of people don't be coming on time to relieve you from your post and your job yeah. Yeah. what do you call it though i'm out of here though i love you Mwah.